Hello, welcome to Fireside Chats. My name is Magla Pele and the topic for today's show is called Commitment. Uh, we have in the studio with us today Sister Denise who has been practicing Raj Yoga meditation for over 40 years. The purpose of this series is for you, the listener, the viewer, to look at your own sense of uh, philosophical and spiritual integrity, to ask yourself what is your own relationship with God, and to look at uh, things like the core of your own spirituality, if it is a subject that is of interest to you, and uh, to use the content of today's show to measure your own life to see how you fare. We hope that the that which is shared in today's show will be of some interest to you. Sister Denise, very warm welcome to today's show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Um, commitment is a subject that is a bit of a sore point in today's world because um, we see um, many countries across the globe where people have uh, are experiencing very high divorce rates, um, marriages breaking up frequently, um, people coming from dysfunctional families. So is commitment a thing of the past? Well, it's definitely a great, greatly difficult thing for people to have at this time. And I think it's connected with lack of personal spiritual power. You need power to actually carry through with your commitment because it's not that everything is easy all the time. There are always going to be rough patches. And if you have a commitment, it implies that you have to be able to make it across the rough patches. And when people don't have that power, the relationships break down and the commitment isn't there. There are various forms of commitment, aren't there? Uh, would you take us to that? Well, I think the one that you raised, the commitment to a relationship, is the big one. Because it's very, very difficult for people today to uh, maintain and sustain relationships, whether it's a marriage or another family relationship, or whether it's a friendship, or even whether it's a professional relationship. Because um, small things come up and they feel like very big things and then a person isn't able to get through those and maintain their commitment. Mm. I think you also have to have a commitment to yourself. In what way? Well, uh, I think you have to envision on some level your, um, your path through life and make a commitment to that and you find a lot of people who start something but they can't follow through. They will stop their studies when it gets a bit difficult. They will stop in their professional work when it gets a little bit difficult. It's to do with, commitment is to do with being able to get through the difficult areas. And it's also to do with learning the art and skill of negotiating your relationships so that when things change, the circumstances are different, you need to relook at your commitment, maybe reaffirm your commitment, and maybe there are some changes involved, but it doesn't mean that you give up your commitment. You did share that it takes a lot for someone to stay in for the long haul. Yes. What, what, what does one need? Um, if you're committed to someone or something to stay for the full duration because it's um, it's difficult to sustain any uh, any I relationship is difficult to sustain yeah. for eternity any or until death do us part um, anything is difficult to sustain how does one um, keep oneself in it I'm also thinking of commitment to a spiritual practice, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. because that's something that I'm very aware of because that's something I made for myself as a commitment to continue with the spiritual practice. And what happens is that in the beginning, what you see as the road ahead is very different from how the road ahead looks halfway along or after a certain period of time. And I think also in a spiritual practice, like I started quite young, and so after years and years and decades, 
you're not just only following a, a spiritual practice, but you're also growing up and you're moving from youth towards old age and finally death, but you're still, you know, commi committed to your spiritual practice or you're committed to, you can say, a relationship with God, a relationship with truth, a relationship with yourself and the path changes along the way and you change along the way. And so it's very important as you reach different periods where there are changes for you to shift yourself. You're becoming more mature, the path is becoming more subtle. Very often people think at the beginning, well, the exams are difficult at the start, but it'll get easier as you go forward, but it doesn't get easier, it gets more difficult. The idea of it getting easier is a, a delusion or an illusion. And so you may say, oh, well, I didn't expect that it would be like this. And because it doesn't correspond to your expectations, you make that as an excuse to give up the commitment. But if you say, no, I have a commitment and I need to adjust myself, I need to adjust my perspective, whatever I need to do, whatever it takes, and um, sustain my commitment. Uh, Sister Denise, um, being committed to oneself and to others and to one's spiritual path, is it a sign of weakness if you made a decision 20 years ago and you decide um, two decades later that it's no longer working for you? No. That the situation that you find yourself in has become untenable, it's time to leave? Is it a sign of weakness? It's not because you're looking at two decades you have to look at the situation and you have to evaluate um, how much have you changed, take it into consideration. Has the um, person that you made your commitment to failed in uh, their side of the contract? Because there's a contract involved in a commitment. And so if the other party has broken the contract to a point where you say this is really not working, then it's um, actually it'd be a weakness not to break the relationship. You know, and there's sometimes people do that. They say, I made a commitment and therefore I have to, no matter what, carry on with it. I was mentioning this um, on another show that um, that that's really a sign of being trapped by a um, conventional moral code which is toxic. Hmm. Okay, so how do you know um, when to stay and when to leave? I think it's about calculating and evaluating, taking into consideration all the elements of the situation that are relevant and making a um, a really uh, dispassionate assessment. You see, when you're attached to the other party, when you're emotionally involved, it's very difficult to make a dispassionate assessment. But I think that that is what's necessary. And maybe if a relationship is 20 years old, maybe you have a little bit more dispassion, you're a little bit more grounded, because relationships go through a lot of changes and they have to be renegotiated from time to time. And when you reach a point where it's time to renegotiate, you have to see if both parties, yourself is one, the other person is the other party, um, you know, what exactly is it that's making the relationship need to be renegotiated? And if the other party is not fulfilling their side of the contract and is not ready to do what is necessary to bring the relationship onto a proper footing, then it needs to be um, terminated, yeah. Mm. And that, that applies in a professional relationship too. Yeah. What causes somebody who is uh, committed to a certain task to uh, three decades later, shoot him or herself in the foot. You hear of uh, brilliant surgeons who have developed a nasty drug who was found in possession of um, 
um, illegal substances. Uh, you'll hear of um, pilots being fired because they were consuming alcohol on the job. You will hear of um, a um, parent who uh, was deeply devoted to her child when the child was younger, but then suddenly his child becomes an adult, is, you know, disappears from the child's life. Um, what, what causes somebody to sabotage their own commitment in the foot? They invested energy in something and then suddenly... Well, again, you're talking about addiction. Okay, And addiction arises when a person is unable to manage their feelings. So you gave the example of a surgeon. So they may be very good at surgery, they may be a good doctor, but not a good husband, not a good man, not a good woman in uh, other aspects of their life, you see. And that will then cause that person to be unable to perform on their professional level. They may be very competent professionally, but if humanly they're not, they're not going to be able to sustain the professional side because it requires the human side in order for it to be fruitful till the end of the career. I take it that a successful adult is um, whether they choose, whatever they choose to do with their lives, is somebody who's committed to themselves lifelong. What, what does that entail, to be committed to you as a person? Not, not necessarily in a particular profession, or not what you do, but who you are. What, what virtues, what does that take? I think it's all to do with um, self-honor, self-respect, self-dignity. You know, in a spiritual practice, you identify yourself as an eternal, immortal soul. So, if you are um, not honest, if you are not maintaining your integrity, then, um, you know, you're, you're not aligned with yourself. You're operating in opposition to yourself and um, that is not something that you want to do as an eternal an eternal thing. So I think one of the very important things that contributes to fulfilling a commitment to a spiritual practice, which is much more than just the duration of this lifetime, although this is the tangible part, but in your thinking, you see, you think, I have to live with myself forever. So if I'm not right with myself, then that's a serious problem for me, not for anybody else. There are very few who are right with themselves, aren't they? But if you are right with yourself, for me, you know, this is what keeps me along the line that I'm going, is, is an overriding consideration. At every step, I must be right with myself, otherwise I have to do some serious work to get myself right with myself. Because mm. without that, you cannot live, and if you're eternal, you have to live. So you must be right with yourself. There's an overriding concern. Mm. That's a um, very lovely expression, to be right with yourself. Um, how do you maintain a commitment towards your spiritual life? What does that entail? Um, you know, in spiritual life, what I have learned is the importance of the daily discipline of meditation and daily discipline of study, you see, because that creates the sort of underlying rhythm of your life in which you are constantly replenishing yourself. I think it's connected with a form of humility. You, you can never say to yourself, okay, I'm full now, that's it, I don't need to replenish. No. Every single day you're using your energy and you need to replenish that. Also, um, to me, a spiritual practice means a personal evolution. So you continue to evolve until your last breath, you know. So uh, every day there is a possibility to learn, to improve, to take more light. I talked before about taking light, taking power from God. You can never 
say that, okay, I have enough now, I don't need any more, that would be, um, you know, uh, lying to yourself. Y you'd be deceiving yourself. And um, it's a constant refinement. You know, the aim of the spiritual practice of Raj Yoga is to be in perfect balance, to be um, having this uh, combination of virtues, powers, spiritual qualities in a, in a perfect way. And there is no possibility of no improvement still to be done, you see. So you're always striving. And of course, there are moments where you feel a sense of accomplishment, you feel, yes, I'm doing well. But, you know, a few moments later, another challenge will come. Or it may not be a personal challenge, but you see, a person who's doing a spiritual practice is also doing spiritual service. And in spiritual service, you're in relationship with other people who uh, want guidance, who want advice, who want something. And so you have to go into your treasure store of experience to fulfill that or you need to figure out something that you haven't figured out yet because you have to respond to a request. And so it's really um, a sort of wonderful arrangement which really doesn't allow you to stop unless you're really deceiving yourself, which of course is possible. Hmm. What is, um, what role does self-respect play in all of this? Well, I tend to work with the concept of self-honor more than self-respect because of the way self-respect is used in English language commonly. Mm. And I think that we need to honor who we are. Uh, if we say, okay, God is um, using me, God is teaching me, God is guiding me, God is sustaining me, then I have to honor that and have an attitude towards myself that is suitable, you see. If I become, you know, um, self-indulgent or I start thinking negatively, you know, immediately the conscience will say, who do you think you are, you know? And, and that'll be like an attack of ego or, you know, self-doubt or something like this. You have to detect it immediately and stop it right then and there, you see. Otherwise, you're being too casual, you're being too lax, uh, mm. you're not taking it seriously. Mm. Mr. Denise, what happens when one of your um, commitments um, clashes with another of your commitments? How does one make a choice between the two? Say, for example, somebody has chosen um, to be a professional tennis player, but that person's also a mum uh, of two minor children, and the one unfortunately clashes with the other. How does one know which to keep and which to give up? When you begin on a course of uh, being a virtuoso in any field, um, you have to understand one thing, that if you want to be a professional tennis player or a fully engaged spiritual practitioner or whatever, you have to decide at what level you want to go. Because if you want to go to a maximum level, then you have to understand that that involves sacrifice. So if you say, okay, I want to be a mum, that means you have changed your commitment. And so you cannot commit to two things that require your exclusive attention because you will get a clash. So, I mean, a tennis player usually maxes out at about the age of 30. So you can go and be a mum and it's, you know, you too old after a certain time in uh, the field of sport. So it, you come to another stage of your life. But going back to the idea of a commitment to spirituality, 
I mean, one is your inner spiritual growth, which happens in any context. If you're going to be a family person, or if you're going to be dedicated and maintain uh, a single life, either way you're in a context. So for me, I'm in a single life, but I'm with all kinds of people, like a kind of a spiritual family. So there is always a question of balancing. You have to balance your inner work with your outer work. You have to make sure that you're not doing something which is contrary to your health, uh, contrary to you know, all of the different balances in life. You cannot do something which is going to drain you financially uh, uh, so that you'll be in trouble financially, so that you'll be in trouble in terms of your uh, personal energy. So it's a responsibility to make sure that you have all the bases covered and that you move forward in a balanced way. Mm. Is it, Denise, um, is it ever okay to, um, to take one's commitment so far that you start compromising your other values at some stage uh, in order to maintain your commitment. For example, we've all heard of professional athletes who use banned substances just so they can stay at number one spot. Um, that's just one example, but there are others within the field. You hear of um, uh, professional people who have to be awake, say, for 48 hours um, nonstop, who take um, something that they shouldn't in order to maintain that. So um, in order to um, fulfill their commitment, yeah, uh, but you, you, see you, you, you compromise yourself a bit along the way. Is but it that, okay that's to do that? That's not a commitment. That's, that's, not. that's extremism. Okay, so uh, co a commitment is okay and extremism is not. Well, as soon as you go to an extreme, there's going to be a problem. And if you're going to make a commitment, you have to see whether you're capable of taking it to the level that you expect. And one of the things that sometimes will happen is you realize that your capacity is not as great as your desire. And there uh, you on, have on, to come back. Your capacity is not as great as your desire. Okay, that's a very difficult uh, juncture to be in. Well, I mean, anyone who wants to reach a state of excellence has to look at the uh, equation of capacity to um, success. You see, if you're an opera singer and you have a great desire to be the great, you know, but you strain your voice in uh, the process, a, a you'll, never, mm. you'll never be able to do it mm. because you didn't take into consideration your capacity. You, you overruled that because of your desire. And desire in spiritual terms is considered as something very negative. And so you need to have a high aim. You need to aim high. Um, but you also need to distinguish between if it's a desire that you just want it at any cost, you still have to pay the price. And so if you're not intelligent, you can be taken over by that desire, that, um, you know, comp compulsion, which, which is unhealthy, psychologically unhealthy. And then that makes you do things which are not right, you see. So, I mean, if you are a great one, if it's in your destiny, it will, it will do it. You won't have to desire. You will have to come to terms with what you are destined to be and serve that destiny, which is very different from having a desire that you can't fulfill because you don't have the capacity. Sure. Hmm. Yeah. Um, Denise, what happens if you come to a point in your life where you find that your, uh, it's not a question of you not having the capacity, but you find that your commitment had come as t at too great a price? And well, you've, al you've already paid the price. Y that's the thing, you renegotiate it. And there so, may so be so a at every time juncture in your life, at any juncture, you, you have can to renegotiate. Okay, to see whether it's still okay to be committed to this thing or yes. this person yes. right now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 
Um, how does your commitment to God um, affect you? It means that you have to keep maturing. And if you have a feeling to remain immature, something will happen which will force you to mature or you have to give up. Mm. Okay. So one's relationship with God involves maturity. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's not something that's well known. Okay. I think it's one of the secrets that Sister Denise has taught us. Uh, Sister Denise, thank you very much for sharing your wisdom in today's show. I think the audience have benefited a lot from what you had to say. And as usual, you said and shared things that is not commonly known. And you've given many listening to today's um, episode some food for thought. So thank you for that. Um, those of you listening to us at home from the comfort of your own lounge, I hope that um, you were able to hear uh, the depth of what was shared today. Um, there is no such thing as an out-and-out -out commitment. Sister Denise was sharing that at every point you do have and you should be renegotiating and looking at what you've committed yourself to, whether it's something or someone. Uh, you should be looking at it again and again to see if it is working for you. And also make sure that your commitment or your devotion to something or not and someone is not harming you or anyone else in the process. A very powerful message and one that I hope you can use in your life. So thank you for sharing your time and until the next episode, goodbye.